But in terms of the uh, claims of a possible detection of a molecule associated with life, uh, it's, it's far too premature at this particular stage. And I think there needs to be a higher bar when it comes to claims of life in the universe. Whether K218b can generate life is still under sheds, but the ongoing discovery regarding its atmosphere made space scientists scratch their heads. You might be perplexed about what atmosphere has to do with its habitability. Believe it or not, the discovery of weird atmosphere shifts has created a massive boon for NASA. These researchers are on a mission to unravel the secrets hidden within the otherworldly veils of K218b by its extreme biospheres. This exoplanet K218b is located approximately 124 light years away from Earth in the constellation Leo. It's not like this is the only exoplanet scientists found the potential for life, but fortunately it is one of the first exoplanets discovered within the habitable zone of its parent star where conditions might be just right for liquid water to exist on its surface. K218b is known to orbit a red dwarf star within the Goldilocks star zone once every 33 days. Scientists believe the Goldilocks star stellar radiation might be why it possesses liquid water, but it's unclear. This exoplanet is a massive Earth. It's far beyond big where we're living at the moment, but quite smaller than many gas giants in our solar system like Jupiter and Saturn. From rough stats, consider K218b at around 8.6 Earth masses and 2.6 Earth radii. Some scientists have even named it Mini Neptune. The red dwarf is colder and relatively tiny than the Sun, with 45% of its radius and a temperature range of 3184 degrees Celsius. It's said to have pretty normal stellar activity, but if they really have, the star spots that create false signals are still considered speculative. It's also assumed that almost all the red dwarf stars, like the Proxima Centauri, LHS 1140, etc., have 80% planets in their habitable zones. The K218b has a density between Earth and Neptune, hinting that the planet could have a hydrogen-rich environment. The hydrogen inspection isn't serious to ponder, but it just strengthens the statement once predicted by Madhu Sedan and his colleagues. These guys keenly studied the K218b and concluded that habitability is possible. In 2021, these researchers even said this exoplanet might be a potential Hycean world due to its hydrogen-rich surfaces. Matu Sudan was sure that K218b has some connection with Hycean and is a rocky surface with a thick envelope or Neptune-like composition, even solidifying the hypotheses. Some of the conditions in the oceans of these worlds could be similar to habitable conditions in Earth's oceans, that is, similar temperatures and pressures, presence of liquid water and energy from the star. Madhu Sudan told Science Alert at the time. However, further research concludes that a pure water planet with a thin atmosphere is a no-brainer even to expect. But yes, we can imagine a hostile surface with a somewhat ocean or something more overwhelmingly massive. The red dwarf star is hundreds of thousands of years old, so the K218b must have existed a few million years ago. Thus, scientists assume there might be an ocean within the K218b, but probably underlaid by a high-pressure ice layer on top of a rocky core. When the temperature gets closer to absolute zero, liquids and gases cease their further motion and come together. You won't find different phases of these states of matter, which ultimately result in no separation between ocean and atmosphere. However, whether the K218b has a separate ocean lacks clarity, as if we see from the outside planet, it becomes nearly impossible to detect it with just the mass and radius of K218b. Madhu Sudan made another statement. There are many open questions, but this is only a first guess at this stage. The assumption is that if microbial aquatic life can form in these oceans in the same manner as they did on Earth, then some of the biosignatures may also be common. His team was beyond passionate about proving this exoplanet could generate life, so they used the James Webb Space Telescope to look more closely into K218b's atmosphere. 
they studied how this planet orbits between Earth and the Red Dwarf and later delved deeper into the difference in starlight. The researchers were astonished to notice the change in the composition of K218b by spinning around us and its hot star. This was fascinating and quite perplexing to observe the weird atmosphere shift. The sharp eyes of the JWS observatory also sneaked further and guess what? Madhusudan and the team found the presence of methane and carbon dioxide while hinting at an absence of ammonia. The infrared spectrum of James Webb also unveils hints of dimethyl sulphide, but sadly, they didn't sneak closely into its presence. Dimethyl sulphide is linked with life on Earth. It's an essential compound that plays certain ecological roles in K218b's biosphere. The research team is now anticipating turning JWST's mid-infrared Miri to the exoplanet to look for more biosignature hints and, of course, dimethyl sulphide. They said, our ultimate goal is the identification of life on a habitable exoplanet which would transform our understanding of our place in the universe. Our findings are a promising step towards a deeper understanding of Hycean worlds in this quest. That being said, the habitability factor hasn't led to confirmation, but with these compound signs, there might be some possibilities to support life. As exoplanets with Neptune-like composition are considered too hot, even to make observations, but K218b suggests that exoplanets can be too cold as well to harbour liquid water oceans conducive to life. The Hycean world appearance can be attributed to greenhouse effects on the hydrogen envelope, which help K218b to remain habitable at low interstellation rates. No matter if this quest is in its observing stage, it has already broadened our understanding too much about the horizon. The suspicion of life within K218b is enough to let us know Earth can sustain life and other planets. However, it's just a little tricky to detect them with the naked eye, but the ongoing research with JWST and other high-end observatories has even vanished these statements. The researchers are so intrigued that they are determined enough for atmospheric characterization to find the possibilities of extraterrestrial life on the K218b surfaces. They are studying the presence of specific gases, their concentrations, and how they interact with the planet's surface and each other. With advanced spectrographic meters and computer models, the scientists will further study the gases and analyze the data from the JWS observatory. No doubt, they can also further opt for a follow-up mission to investigate K218b and other potentially habitable exoplanets to search for life. However, it's worth mentioning that before the JWST mission, the Hubble Space Telescope was sent to space to dig into the atmospheric conditions of K218b. This telescope wasn't very advanced and couldn't support detection in the infrared spectrum, though it found out the relative ratios of potential biosignature gases. It suspects K218b has a hydrogen atmosphere, which the James Webb Telescope later confirmed. The Hubble Space Observatory found out water vapour makes up between 0.7 and 1.6% of the atmosphere, whereas ammonia wasn't discovered in much heftier quantity. The concentration was relatively low, which ultimately supports the existence of a separate ocean. Carbon dioxide was also reported in small quantities. They were either depleted or completely absent, according to Hubble Space Observatory. This hostile atmosphere almost makes up 6.2% of K218b's mass, resembling Uranus and Neptune. Also, it's worth mentioning that this mission deleted hazes in the atmosphere of K218b. You remember, as we discussed earlier, the potential chances of dimethyl sulphide in this exoplanet. This could be why the earlier scientists noticed the cloud formation because DMS emissions can lead to the formation of sulfate aerosols, which in turn can influence cloud formation and properties. However, the Hubble Space Telescope mission said if clouds really exist in the atmosphere, they will most likely chill ice, but they couldn't elaborate in detail if this is really true and possible. The researcher also said the cloud formation could be the result of ammonium chloride, sodium sulfide, potassium chloride and zinc sulfide depending on the planet's core properties. To be concise, if the planet can support life, it depends on its envelope structure. 
there may be too much heat in the deeper layers of the atmosphere, whereas the water-containing layers might have temperatures and pressures suitable for life to develop. Keep in mind that considering whether the planet is habitable or not isn't a matter of days. It takes the scientists ages to gather the suspects and later make a detailed study. First things first, the researcher faces great obstacles in terms of funding. The limitation in cost value and lack of support don't let them implement more advanced scientific instruments to automate the research process or at least proactive it. Data analysis also demands sophisticated software, computational power and expertise in data science. Hence, gathering such a qualified team is challenging since one mishandling can fail the entire mission. So, let's end the video here. I hope you love studying about K218b. Make sure to comment below your take on this exoplanet's habitability.